Hello. All right, tempo changes. Have you ever recorded, started to record, or write a song, and then wonder what it would sound like at a different tempo? And you've already got audio recorded. Maybe it's got MIDI and audio, who knows? And it's not easy to change the tempo. Actually, it is. Let's do that. I've got a session here. It's a combination of, of MIDI and audio. I've got some loops in here. Um, I've got some MIDI with virtual instruments in here. What is this? This is um, structure plugin. I'm using percussion. I've got some um, actual, you know, electric bass that I recorded in here, guitar that I've recorded in here. So it's a combination of MIDI, combination of audio loops, and a combination of, of recorded audio that make up, make up this session. And I want to change the tempo. Right now the tempo is, is 98 beats per minute. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to set the tempo back to 98. Okay, so let's listen to it. Okay, fine. 98 beats per minute, all good. I want to see what it would sound like. What's the what does it feel like when I bump it up to, I don't know, 108 or 110. All right. So in order to do that, I need to do a couple of things. I need to make sure that all of the tracks are set to tick bass, right? So I'm going to set the track. I'm holding option key on a Mac, alt key on a PC and I'm resizing the tracks to a medium height so that I can see a little more um, uh, activity on each track, right? So what I'm looking for is the time base selector on each track. This track is already set to ticks. So when you create a new MIDI track or you create a new instrument track, it defaults to tick based. When you create an audio track, it defaults to sample base. So I wanna just go through here and make sure that all of these tracks are tick based. That one is ticks, ticks. Let me go down to the audio tracks here. Okay, so here's one that's not, that's sample based. So I'm going to hold down the option key so that when I switch this one track from samples to ticks, it will do the same for any other track that might be sample based already. And I'm glancing through here and I see that they're all tick based now. So that's the first thing I need to do. Now, MIDI tracks, I don't really need to do anything else, but audio tracks, I need to enable elastic audio. Here's a bass track. I want to enable, I'm just gonna do um, polyphonic, what the heck. Uh, guitar, I'm definitely, polyphonic's already enabled there. Guitar, uh, B3, this is MIDI, so it does not need elastic audio. This Rhodes is B3, I mean, is MIDI as well. So let's see, percussion, that's MIDI. This is a snare loop, so it's uh, audio. It's set to rhythmic as my elastic audio algorithm. That's fine. And same for the kick drum. This stylus bounce loop is also rhythmic elastic audio. That's good. If I had, uh, you know, voice or a saxophone or a flute, a single monophonic instrument, I might choose... Um, monophonic as the elastic audio algorithm. All three of these top three options here are all really good. The algorithms are designed to um, optimize the sound quality based on what audio you might be recording on that. So polyphonic would be like a chordal instrument, guitar for example, or uh, piano keys, or maybe it's a full mix. You've got a bunch of instruments on one track. You could use polyphonic rhythmic. You could use on drums. It could be uh, a variety of different things that's rhythmic and then monophonic would be a solo instrument or monophonic instrument. I should okay, say. now that I've verified that all the tracks in the session, every track in the session is set to tick based as the time base, all audio tracks have elastic audio enabled. Now, if I don't enable elastic audio on you know one of the audio tracks or more of the audio tracks, they are not going to conform or change tempos and that's going to create a problem because they're going to play out of sync. So you have to really make sure that all audio tracks have one of those three algorithms enabled. Now, the fourth one, Vary Speed, um, you can choose, let me 
pull it up here. But the difference with that one is if you change the very speed, if you change the tempo, you choose that as your algorithm, you change the tempo and you slow the song down, the pitch is gonna go down as well. And if you speed the song up, the pitch is gonna go up. The top three algorithms, polyphonic, rhythmic, and monophonic, do not change the pitch. I can change the tempo all I want and the pitch will remain the same. So all of my tracks, my audio tracks are elastic audio enabled and they're set to to ticks as the time base. Uh, my tempo of my session is 98 beats. And I'm just gonna do this on the fly. Change the tempo, 98, I'm gonna type in 108. That's what I said before. Okay, let me go to 120. Type in the tempo. I've got my MIDI controls visible up at the top of the edit window. And if you don't see that, go to the top of the edit window, the upper right corner, and go to the edit window view selector, and make sure MIDI controls are visible. All right, so I typed in 120, change the tempo. Let's go crazy fast, 150. Now it's doing this all in real time, right? It's as soon as I change the tempo, it's instantaneous. Let's go real slow. I'm gonna go down to uh, 60, 60 beats per minute. And you notice when I type in the new tempo, all of the audio and the MIDI clips on the timeline will stretch or compress uh, because they're either gonna be longer or shorter based on how I'm changing the tempo. So now it's 60 beats per minute. Now, the original tempo was 98. Completely different vibe altogether. Anyway, all right, so let me go back. I'm gonna go to 80. Let's go to 102. I'm just picking random numbers. Okay, so I'm typing in a tempo that applies to the duration of the song. Now, if I really wanna get crazy, and not that you'd wanna do this, but I have played with this drummer before. I think you'll know what I'm talking about. So I've enabled the tempo ruler at the top of my, my timeline, and I can expand it. I can blow that up a little bit and show, whoops, I didn't wanna go there. I can show a, a graph of the tempo. I'm gonna make it a little bit larger here. And I'm gonna use the pencil tool and I'm just gonna draw in some tempo. Oops, I have to enable the conductor. Let me turn him on. And there we go. Okay, now there's a tempo that we can all get with. All right, here we go. Now this is applying to both MIDI and audio at the same time in real time. Speed up. So all of the tracks in the session, MIDI, audio, are all remaining in perfect sync and they are slowing down based on the tempo graph that I've created here. Not that you want to do this, but uh, I said a second ago, I've played with this drummer before. I think we all have at one point or another in our... <laughs> in our gigging days. All right, so that is how you change the tempo of a song. Now I'm gonna get rid of all this. We don't need to put all that in there. And I'll go back to 98, that's the original tempo. And there we go. Now the cool thing about this is if you don't like it, you can easily go back to the origi original tempo. This is non-destructive, I am not, uh, impacting the original files. This is, they're being stretched or compressed on the fly. They're not being, you know, overwritten or damaged. So if you decide you don't want to deal, you know, keep this tempo change, you can easily go back to the original audio files uh, and they remain unscathed. So you're good to go. So hopefully this will help with tempo changes in songs that include both MIDI and audio.